Welcome to the Beginner Meat Rabbit Q&A video where I answer all of the questions you have asked me about rabbits. So a few days ago I put a post on Facebook asking people to submit any questions they had about raising rabbits and I have gotten a lot of answers and in this video I'm going to answer as many of them as I can. I also thought it would be more fun to look at all these cute bunnies instead of just staring at my face the whole time. So that is why I am in the rabbit tree. Okay, so let's answer some questions. How old can a rabbit get pregnant and safely pass kits? I'm not talking about how old to breed them, but how old can they give birth without putting their life at risk? So the youngest a rabbit can breed, I've heard, is four months. That's not advised because usually six months is older and their bodies have more time to get big enough and mature enough so that it's safer for them to give birth when they're too small. Babies could get stuck very easily, but the youngest they can get pregnant is about four months old. Another question is, does it damage my buck or anything else to practice on my grow out? And they explain a little bit further, because of the heat, my breeding program is at a halt. Can or should my buck practice on our grow out girls? So a buck, um, a boy rabbit, is called a buck. And in the summer, oftentimes, if it's really hot, they, they're, um, they can no longer breed, so they go sterile temporarily. And oftentimes that is very frustrating for the breeders because they want to have baby bunnies all through all um, through the summer, and then they have to do all this special stuff to make it so that their bucks can actually breed. So I've heard that the reason that this happens to the bucks is not just for that; it's actually to help the does because um, when it gets really hot outside, the does um, rabbits have such thick wool coats that the winter doesn't bother them as nearly as much as the summer does so they can very easily die of heat stroke or have other problems because it's too hot and when a rabbit gets extra pregnant, hot and that and that is also extra dangerous for them to be pregnant in the heat and the summer can also um, neg negatively affect the baby bunnies when they're born so to answer this question I think it would, the buck wouldn't breed the grow out, the grow out girls, but it would, the only thing it would do is it wouldn't help him at all to do that, like it's not going to make him less sterile quicker or some, anything like that, it's just going to, if anything, they're going to be fine or either he's going to be hounding them and harassing them and they're going to be so, you know, bugged and scared. If I was you, I would not do that, but it's your choice, obviously. A similar question is, how can I prevent my buck from going heat sterile? So the only way I've heard of preventing your buck from going sterile in the summer is if you house him in a air-conditioned area, like in your house or in a special bunny place that has air conditioning. Um, you can put fans there out in his cage or area, or you could put frozen water bottles or stuff, but that's not going, in my experience, that isn't going to keep him cool enough to actually be able to breed. So, unfortunately, it is something we all have to deal with. Here's another question. Is it difficult to start up raising meat rabbits? Ra meat rabbits are considered one of the easier, um, things to start on your homestead. Usually people say chickens and rabbits are some of the first things and the easiest things that you can start with. You know, there's a learning curve with every new animal you get, but once you get past that original, like, learning all the stuff about rabbits, it is very easy, in my opinion. I have received another question about angoras. Um, this person lives in Texas, and she, and they say it's very hot, but, but, but bunnies are in a very nice shady spot. What would I need to make that possible? So I think they're asking about angoras, about living, having them live in a very hot climate in some shade. So I have angora rabbits, and we live in a place where it also gets very hot. Well, whenever it gets above 80, I think it's 86 degrees, is when you need to cool your rabbits off is what I have read. So as long as you have fans and frozen water bottles or some other means of keeping them cool and 
perhaps you pluck them or clip them or something as you're like in the late spring so that their wool is very short during the summer or maybe you do like an extra plucking midsummer even though you're not going to harvest the wool as long as you perhaps keep their wool short and keep them cool I think they'd be a I think it would be you'd be okay having angoras um, in your climate. The question is does breeding matter when breeding for meat? Is it possible to breed rabbits for meat but have someone else butcher? How common is it for meat breeders to breed for show? So, um, there are meat breeds and dwarf breeds and other breeds and so I would suggest getting a meat breed because they will have more meat and they will grow faster in a quicker amount of time and produce the most meat. Um, and you don't need to, you know, have a pedigree or anything for breeding meat rabbits. A lot of people um, have mutts, which is basically like whatever type of rabbit they have, as long as it's meat mutts, that should be pretty good. And I hope that answered that question. It is, um, if you can find someone else to butcher rabbits, then that that's awesome. I don't, I don't like, you know, people take their pigs to the bu the butcher or something. I don't know if there's like, like I don't think most butchers know do rabbits. I mean. So if you can find, I don't know, like if you have like a friend or a neighbor or something who wants to butcher them, then it is possible. To answer your third question, I don't know how common it is for meat breeders to breed for show. Oftentimes there are people who want to breed for show just because for show and then other people want to breed for meat. And they're sort of two separate things. I feel, I think some people have like show rabbits and meat rabbits, like both. So I don't know how common it is, but I do know people do both, and but I feel like it might be fairly common, perhaps. Another person asks, what are good dimensions for a nesting box for standard Rex? Whether you are buying or building a nest box, bigger is always better if you have big rabbits. Um, there are large nest boxes and extra large nest boxes, and as long as the nest box can fit in your cage, like through the cage door, um, the bigger it can be, the better. You want to make sure your rabbit has plenty of room and, you know, to turn around and go in. If the nest box is too small, they will not use it and perhaps have babies where you don't want them to, either on the floor or the wire, depending on your setup. What I would do is I would Google nest boxes and then pick the size I would want if I was going to buy them. And then if I was going to build them, I would take those measurements and build my own with those measurements. So if they said 11 inches by 12 inches and then like whatever, then I would just, instead of buying it like that, I would just cut my wood 11 inches and then the other one 12 inches. And so hopefully that would, is helpful for you. Another question is, what is your favorite breed of, for meat? Now I breed meat mutts. I have bred, I, th I think I've only bred meat mutts. We, I don't have a favorite breed. I feel like there are pros and cons to each. Not very many cons, but there's like different pros to each and everything. Um, so I don't think it really matters the exact breed of meat rabbit. As long as you have a meat breed, that would be really good to start with. I mean, there are tiny variations in each breed, but for the most part, they are the same. But if you wanted to get the most good qualities of meat, I would suggest meat mutts because they're really, I don't know, they just have like all sort of bits of qualities from each one. Another person asks, I'm getting my first rabbits this year, dual purpose rex. I'm considering tractoring grow out kits since they will need to be a bit older for the use of both pelt and meat. Has anyone noticed a negative effect on their pelts or fur if this was done? Hoping the fresh green under them will slightly offset the feed costs. Yes, they will still be given pellets and hay. So I have had um, rabbits and tractors in the past, as is obvious by the picture. And what I noticed is that they sort of didn't, they didn't care about the rain. They didn't care about like the weather. So they would go out in the rain and their fur would get very... Like, you know, whenever you go out in the rain, your hair gets all frizzy sometimes. Like, it sort of was like that. It was very frizzy and coarse. Not coarse, but it was just, it was different than the rabbits I had under shelter all the time. So, if you wanted to have 
like cover all over the tractor or perhaps you maybe like that feel but they did um the fur did feel different with all the exposure to rain and all that someone says we want to know everything about them how do you get them how much do they cost what do they eat what would you need to raise them but rabbits can range from five dollars to about fifteen or twenty dollars for a meat rabbit usually the older they are the more expensive they are so you can buy like a six week old kit for like five or ten dollars whereas a full grown rabbit breeder could be like twenty ish dollars um so what do they eat rabbits should have a diet consisting of um free choice hay so they get as much hay as they want it doesn't really matter what type of hay they have you can do timothy hay you can do orchard grass or bermuda hay or brome I, um you shouldn't do full alfalfa though because something about if i remember correctly something like the uh, too much something in the alfalfa is like bad for their kidneys if they have too much of it or something i could be remembering wrong though but um so hay and then you can do pellets, which is basically like rabbit feed. Um, for meat rabbits, you want a higher protein rabbit feed, so you would get 18% protein. They usually have 16% and 18%, and so the higher the protein is, the better it is. You can also do um, whole grain, or you can do like feed them only forage, but for the starters, it's, be it's pretty easy to just start with the pellets. Um, you need a good setup, you need like some sort of enclosure, be it a cage or a hutch or a colony or some other tractor or something. You need obviously all their food and water and the bowls and the hay rack and all that stuff. And then you need um, a nest box and a resting mat. And if you're, they're going to be on wire, you need a resting mat as well as you can have toys and you can feed them fresh greens but that's basically what you need for starting with rabbits you also will need a buck and a doe or multiple does and you will need a lot of knowledge so do your research ahead of time somebody says my doe has almost two week old kits i want her to be able to enjoy the tractor i have for them but not sure if i should take her out on her own or not since the babies only just recently opened their eyes. Is it safe to bring her out on her own, bring the babies in the nest box out while she explores? If your doe is going to be in the tractor for a few hours in the middle of the day, then you can put her in by herself and just leave the nest box in. If you're going to put her out in the morning and leave her in until the evening, you want to put her babies in with her because rabbits feed their babies once in the morning and once at night. And you also might want to put the nest box in there to help her feel more secure because like if she has her babies with her she might feel you know it might be scary to be in a new place away from your babies but then also if the babies start jumping out of the nest box and I mean if they can fit through the wire or something so that's something you might want to consider but I think both of those things would be good um, you could do either depending on what you think is best Another person asks, raising rabbits on the ground, pros and cons, parasite prevention and treatments for various things they could get from being on the ground, thanks. So I've raised rabbits in cages and in tractors and as well as in colonies. The I prefer natural treatments for parasites or really anything, so I've heard pumpkin seeds are a very good prevention and Treatments for various things include herbs. Um, there are many lists of like complete guides to um, herbs and everything that you can use for herbs and everything like every herb and every use for it under the sun for rabbits. Um, several websites have those and things they could get from being on the ground. They could get parasites or worms. They could, um, that's a risk. They could also they could also get mites if you have them on the ground. They're more likely to get that. Um, 
And those are the only two I think people have had problems with, especially if they are in tractors, they could get mites. But if you're raising your grow outs on a tractor, you're probably going to butcher them by the before they get mites for sure anyways. So those are both things to consider. Someone else says, I have to... I have two Flemish giant does. Oh, I have two Flemish giant does. What buck breed would go good to use with them? So that depends on. Well, Flemish giants are a very big boned, slow growing breed. So if you breed your does with another Flemish giant, you will get bigger rabbits, but they will be have more bone than meat, and they will grow slower. So any other right. Um, normal size meat breed would be good, um, Californian, New Zealand, Rex, um, any of those, Silver Fox, all those would be good. Um, do keep in mind, this is, you're doing, or you, this would not be a problem for you, but if you have a small, if you have a doe, you want to make sure the buck is either the same size or smaller than, and then the doe. If you have, like, a normal size doe and a giant buck, then when she ever she gives birth her babies might be too big to come out of her and she might have complications in her birth so that's something to keep in mind else asks about price how much do they eat so i can work out how much feed is going to cost i don't want to start if it's going to work out more per kilogram than other things how much does the breeding trio eat how much do the grow outs eat so this question is going to be very difficult to answer it depends on how big your rabbits are how many does each litter has, what time of year it is, if you can supplement with fresh greens, how expensive pellets and hay are in your area. A buck should eat about one cup of food a day, and does, pregnant does and nursing does, and growing kits should eat as much as they want and can handle. So it's going to be very difficult to estimate how much they're going to eat the best thing to do is try it out and see how it works and if you don't like it then you can just sell all your kits and sell your breeders for prob and probably make a profit out of it anyways. If you ha continue to have problems with your rabbits eating too much and you're losing money instead of gaining money by your rabbits are eating too much and you're not getting enough meat from them, you could try to offset their feed by feeding them greens or you could sell a kit or two from every litter. You buy a bag of feed every month and the feed costs you $15 a bag and you sell a kit or two every litter then you can even out your feed cost and get a free rabbit for the rest of it or you can tractor them or there are many ways to be very frugal in raising rabbits. Someone else says have a trio just reaching breeding age. Recommendations for having them enjoy being handled. With grow outs in tractors, what's the best way to touch and catch to so harvest day isn't too traumatic for them? I personally hold my kits from the minute they are born, and I feel like that is a lot easier than training them to like you because they're used to you from the minute they're born. They're like, all right, so like they're used to it. When they're adjusting from being in the belly to out in the world, they're like, okay, I feel siblings, I feel mom, I feel bedding, I, oh, there's people picking me up, it's all the same. So they don't have to adjust to, oh, I feel all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm three weeks old, and I'm out of the nest, and oh my goodness, someone's holding me. Um, also, even if you have a very, very violent doe, I have had multiples of these, they are so violent, and you, if you keep working at it, even if they're so mean, you can make them nice. I have a doe that's just started to be nice with me, and she's actually bitten me several times in the past few years, but she's actually doing pretty good now and liking pets and coming up to me, so I would suggest um, petting them whenever possible and giving them treats, hand feeding treats, um, try not to scare them or hurt them in any way, only pick them up when it's necessary and do so in a as kind of manner as possible. Another question is, I have my cages coming, what do I put the cages in? Can I do a three side structure with a roof? At what height do you put your feeders? I purchased the water nipple system also, and I'm not sure what height to put them. So, many people hang their cages from a roof system. Many people make stands for them. Many people put like secure them into the wall. Um, so it really all depends on what your setup is. 
Um, a three-sided structure with a roof would be awesome, as long as they have enough ventilation. I would suggest getting your rabbits, and then when they're full-grown, measuring. Because everyone's wire, like, your wire, like, I can't say, like, three spaces of wire up or anything like that, because, like, it won't be exact, because my wire is probably different than your wire and all that stuff, so... I always say that it's, it'd be better to have it a little bit too high than a little bit too low because if it's too low they want to dig in it and the babies can sit in it easier. You can always make like a step stool, like put like a block of wood in there if the babies can't reach it or something. But And then for the water, I don't use um, automatic water nipple things, I use bowls so I wouldn't know exactly what to what height to put them at, but I would suggest the same thing with the food. Put it sort of maybe like face height. Like if your rabbit's sitting in the cage, maybe put it like in line with its nose or thereabout, perhaps. Someone else asks, I see rabbit tractors with slats like in the picture or two by four fencing for a floor to keep them from digging out. How do you move it without hurting their feet? Most of the time, whenever their rabbits the rabbits are in the tractor for a few days they either get they learn very quickly to stand on the wire and or on the slats to not get their feet twisted off or anything and I have a little you can't see in the picture but I have like a little raised platform and they jump on that so pretty quickly they learn to not get caught just the first few days I move it very slowly and then they catch on pretty quick that that's what you're supposed to do so it hasn't really been a problem Somebody else says, I will be getting rabbits soon. Do I have to use grow out tractors? I don't have any grass. I have hanging wire cages. No, you do not have to use grow out tractors. A lot of people with grass like to use them because they offset the feed cost a little bit and make their rabbits lives a tiny bit more fun and happier and healthier, but you can use wire cages just fine. You will have to make sure that you have enough cages and enough feeder space so that your rabbits aren't overcrowded. Um, but that's perfectly fine to use cages. You don't have to use grow out, grow out tractors. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. Um, I'm going to end the video pretty soon. And I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. I, If you guys liked this, please let me know in the comments of this video or in the Facebook comments. I, If you guys like it, I might do one of these things again. Um, so yeah, and I also hope you enjoyed all these cute bunnies everywhere. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!